happy day. My friend Hans Ruford is here. I guess out of everybody I ever knew besides Cherokee Dawn, you are probably the person I've known the longest. Well, because yeah, since you were four years old. I was thinking about that, that uh, I've probably been a guest on here as, because I used to host this show yes, even before yes. I was a guest. But yes, I, uh, I think of you as extended family and yeah. um, on, on more ways than one. And your yeah. dad taught me a whole lot about cussing and fussing. <laughs> In, in other languages sometimes. <laughs> yes, yes. I can remember as I worked in the kitchen, he would hire somebody and they'd say, I'm not putting up with his mouth. He do do do. He said, and I said, listen, let me tell you about Joe Ruford. He doesn't ask any more of you than he's not willing to commit himself. Well, and that's the other thing too, is that he, I think that was what, I mean, you know, love him or hate him. He always expected more from people than anyone else ever did. Absolutely. And th they either survived it and came mm -hmm. out of it a mm -hmm. better person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at his wake, so many people said, you know, your dad is the one who, who gave me enough drive yes, and direction yes. and constant pressure to push me to be a better human. Mm -hmm. And those who couldn't take it, it, it wasn't because he wasn't trying to extract the very best out of you. Yeah, you absolutely, know? absolutely. I got a little of that too. I, I really enjoy mentoring younger folks. I don't think I'm quite as um, aggressive. Evil, uh, <laughs> evil. Sometimes Joe would, um, and I would just, I would yell at him as loud as he would yell. And he was like, I don't think he knew how to take yeah, it. Yeah, but I think he appreciated and respected that too. Yeah, because I that, wouldn't give in to, yeah. you know. Especially okay. when you're right. Now, you know, if it's something that, it's his way or the highway that's different yes. but if it's something where and there you, were a few things that were his way yeah, or the yeah. highway yeah yeah, yeah. we can and do a we whole show on that, that for yeah. sure yeah well you're here today because you're involved in something going on in jasper and somebody everybody's so excited about the new woodbridge inn yeah but there's also the woodbridge inn store yeah which is really cool you and know people are saying why is it in town because there's this amazing building oh yeah available. that building and it's uh, fantastic so if you're not familiar with downtown jasper when we moved there in 75, it was the True Value Hardware store. Mm -hmm. Huge, mm -hmm. huge store frontage. And then it has a downstairs, which was the sort of sporting good, fishing equipment part of the True right. Value. And right. it had a back entrance. Don and Judy Boggus. Yep, yep. And uh, history, we used to go in the back door from Mama's Sandwich Shop yeah, and take right them deliver spaghetti to yeah. them. So, yeah, I mean, no, the history is there. And yeah. then uh, that was that for years, and then it became the Hallmark store for mm -hmm. years, and mm -hmm. then it was Designs on Main, Designs on Main for a few years, right? Uh, which has moved uh, kind of over, over by the, um, the old high school, I still call uh -huh. it. I don't know what exactly. it is now. Exactly, yeah. Um, yeah. Where I went to high school. Um, It'll always be the old high school. Yeah, in yeah. my brain, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, but it's a, it's a great space, and, you know, we, our family, were sort of finished with the Woodbridge in 2019, mainly because of my health ups and downs, and, um, but uh, it'll always be a part of my, my history, my DNA. Yeah. Yeah. Its success is my success, and so I want it to thrive and survive. I just don't uh, have the, the, I don't have the bandwidth anymore to run a restaurant. You right. know what I mean? I don't think right. I want employees ever again, if no. I am to be totally honest. No, no. Um, but I still love, I, I miss my customers. I miss, mm -hmm. you know, having that connection. Uh, I've been doing Bananas Foster once a month there, mm -hmm. and that's a I ton of that. fun. That is fun. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I, people post the pictures on Facebook, and I don't realize from my perspective how high that flame is going. And then mm -hmm. I see the photos, mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh, I mm -hmm. should look on the ceiling maybe. Um, but anyway, when, when the Flints, who own the Woodbridge now, approached me with the idea of doing a general store, because, you know, I do a, a line of spices, and right. I have been for... And I have to say, those spices, I've incorporated them in so many recipes now, just test and trial, because you know me, a recipe is only a beginning. That's right. So I've taken Sugar Baby and done things with it. I've taken Cajun Joe and done things with it. My shrimp and grits has Cajun Joe Love in it. it now. Love it. And, and my... My shrimp and grits is like nobody else's in the world. Nobody in the world uses cream cheese in shrimp and grits. That sounds good. But I think that God meant for cream cheese <laughs> to be on everybody's plate at least once a day. So so I did that, but I needed that little kick of Cajun Joe. Sure. So and, and a little goes a long way, but if mm -hmm. you want it spicy, you can you can exactly. keep going with it. So yeah. Yeah. Um, but I also have been making the, the cheese bread that we did at Woodbridge for years mm -hmm. and years. Mm -hmm. So we already had some products, and again, the idea was to have a retail component 
so there's so much going on in downtown Jasper. You know, 10 years ago. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. I mean, it's amazing. Thank you. Yeah, that on, a, <laughs> yeah. on an afternoon, you'll see 40 pedestrians going between the coffee shop, the mm -hmm. distillery, the mm -hmm. brewery, the wine tasting room. Now we have a gourmet shop, you know, mm -hmm. uh, similar to my friend Sarah up in, uh, in, out, of in out of the blue in Blue yep. Ridge, who I just yep. saw this morning. Um, but I mean, it's, it's a huge space. So we were able to actually build in not one, but two kitchens. So we have mm -hmm. a production kitchen where we can make the cheeses and uh, soups and uh, hummus and things like that to sell in the market. Mm -hmm. But we also have a demonstration kitchen which has 16 uh, chairs around the actual kind of uh, grand Kind of like we used to do at Town & Country. It's in Blue Ridge. very much yeah. like that. Yeah. Very much yeah. like that. But you know, with Town and & Country, and, and I love that space, but we sort of went in and retrofitted a furniture store mm -hmm. and we kind of shoehorned in a, a demo area. And it worked out great and I loved working with Donna. Uh, and that was always an event, you mm -hmm. know, that we would have mm -hmm. people the whole right. 515 corridor. That's where we actually declared you a Georgia State Treasury, a treasure, because we had David Ralston mm -hmm. do the um, proclamation. And, and I can see Jen standing there reading it to Yeah, you. and yeah. Christy Lindstrom was yeah. working with him at mm -hmm. the time. She mm -hmm. helped uh, make that a real thing. Right. That's, I got chill bumps thinking about that. Um, but so having learned a lot, we used to do demos actually at Out of the Blue, but it's such a small space. Mm -hmm. it, it's just, there wasn't enough, you know, space to actually make that happen. So we have the luxury of space at this property. And so we really did, uh, we took, if you'd ever been into designs on Main, they did a really good job with their sort of checkout counter cash mm -hmm. wrap area. Mm -hmm. Um, and we basically just retrofitted that and gutted that area and used its bones to create uh, the perfect demo kitchen. It's got an oven. It's got an induction cooktop, um, which means we don't have to have a very loud, loud fan going on, so you can right. actually hear. Uh, our friend Hewitt, who used to work here, you know right. Hewitt well. Um, he came and uh, helped us kind of pick what equipment we needed, and we have an overhead camera that we can zoom in. And so the folks sitting in the room, even if they don't have the best seat, they can just look up at the large monitor. Exactly. Instead of having a mirror that's right. stationary, someone can actually zoom into what I'm making in the pan, or if mm -hmm. you're there mm -hmm. uh, teaching biscuits or, or how to make peach cobbler, right. they can get in on the action and see. And I hope to have you up there to do some We've got to do that. I tell you, I, I cannot ever think about Woodbridge Inn and peach cobbler and not think about a specific couple that used to eat there on Sundays. Had three beautiful daughters, and the wife was always watching the husband's health. And he loved my peach cobbler. So when she would leave the table, and, and at that time, peach cobbler was included with your meal right. on Sundays. Sure. And so he would have his meal and his cobbler, and then his wife would leave and take the little girls to the bathroom. And while he was gone, she would say, you know, he'd look at me and say, oh, I have three kids. Can you get me one more peach cobbler while she's gone to the bathroom? <laughs> and I'm like, you don't need another one. Yeah, but I want it. Yeah, yeah. And so I would bring him that little extra dish of cobbler. And I said, what a compliment that not only did he like it, he liked it enough to eat it twice. And he's kind of having a little affair there with <laughs> your peach cobbler <laughs> behind peach the, you cobbler. know. So. But it was so funny. And I said, people would call and, and they would want to order a quart of chicken and dumplings. Well, we always ran out at lunch. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that Willie Cisnero let me make. Right. And I would do chicken and dumplings. Well, we would only have X amount of orders. Sure. And so a guy would call from Rome and say, I'm coming in from Rome. And I'd go back there and say, Willie, I need to make more dumplings. Oh, but lunch is over. Lunch is over. I said, it doesn't matter. This yep. guy's driving in from Rome. Yep. So that's the great thing about the Woodbridge Inn. It was always custom made to the customers' wants and needs. Well, and that's what's missing. And that missing was perfect. In, in hospitality. Perfect. And, and uh, I don't know if I, if I told you, you know, I went to, to Georgia State University and they have a school of hospitality. They right. just celebrated their 50th year as a school and I, I got like a lifetime achievement award mm -hmm. uh, from them. And I'm super proud because that, you know, hospitality is not a job, it's a lifestyle. It is. And us being in that kind of remote location at the time, because, you know, to get to Jasper was a commitment. Mm -hmm. Right, I mean, you know, especially if you're coming from Marietta, Atlanta. Sometimes up old highway. Oh yeah, five. we can, we'll talk about that in a minute. Oh but my gosh. traffic now. Yeah. But yeah. it, it was a commitment to get up there, and so if somebody showed up ten minutes after closing, it might not be their fault. Are we going to turn them away no. hungry? No. Or if no. if we had a guest staying in the hotel whose no. plane was delayed two hours, 
we lived above the restaurant. And so if they called and said, we're going to be two hours late, is there any way you can have food for us? The answer was always yes. Now, yes. it might be a yes, but, you know, yeah. we might not have the full menu, but right. we will make you something yeah. when you get here. Yeah. You know, They were coming for the experience right. of the Woodbridge Inn, and they didn't want to do their travels with that commitment and miss the meal. Sure, and, yeah. and I think yeah. too often, uh, and I, I'll get off my soapbox here in a minute, but hospitality, it extends beyond hotel restaurant. Mm -hmm. It is in real estate. It's mm -hmm. at your pharmacy. It's at your seed and feed. Mm -hmm. Just being taking a moment to acknowledge the person, to to be accommodating, mm -hmm. hospitable. Honestly, even in hospitals, mm -hmm. oftentimes they're you're a number and they look at the chart. They don't stop and say, how are you feeling today? Right. You exactly. know, is there, do you have exactly. any concerns that yeah. that aren't on your chart? Right. You know, so um, that to me, you know, with all of my health history, now that I'm in a, a situation where I can sort of choose my doctor, I, I see Dr. Jennifer Jones because she's a human and she mm -hmm. treats me like a human mm -hmm. and she takes time. Now that means if I have a 12 o'clock appointment, it might be one o'clock because the person ahead of me also right. was able to have a conversation with her. But I will go out of my way to have those experience, whether it's my pharmacist, whether it's my real estate agent or whatever it is, mm -hmm. the person that doesn't see me as a dollar sign or as a transaction that right. sees me as it's the golden rule. You know, mm -hmm. they treat me the way that they would want to be treated in mm -hmm. that situation. Well, we laugh about this because I traditionally, as occasions come up, I make peach cobbler. I'll do the oven full of peach cobblers and I'll go deliver them to certain people. And we laugh and we say, if you buy a house from us within a three mile radius of ball ground, you're going to get peach cobbler. Oh, nice. And so last weekend I was out delivering peach cobbler and doing my thing. And I said, what a joy it is to not just sell somebody a house, yep. but to build a relationship. Because years down the road, they're still getting peach cobbler. They're yep. still getting blackberry cobbler if they like it better than peach. But that's what life is about. It's about down the road. It's not right. about the moment right yes. now. It's about down the road. We've become so transactional and so immediate gratification that we don't think about paying it forward in that mm -hmm. regard. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're exactly right. I mean, I remember um, Jim Jones from Bernie Jones Ford in Jasper. They would buy a $20 or $25 gift certificate for the Woodbridge Inn and give it to everybody that bought a new car. Yeah, they I love that. They weren't necessarily doing it because you know, of course, the net result would be when they're in the market for a car, they will remember that. But they've just made a friend. And oftentimes it would be somebody from out of town mm -hmm. that would, you know, come to purchase a vehicle. And now they have another little anchor to Jasper, another connection. Mm -hmm. And not only would they get the, 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 you know, the trivial gifts card, they would see the Joneses sitting in there having, you know, having a meal. You right, know, right. I, so I, I love that kind of uh, it's community building, it's relationship building. Uh, and as you said, it's it's sort of you're you're paying it forward to the future. And you know, exactly. one day you might need something, and there, you know, you created. It's not why you're doing it, mm -hmm. but the benefits you get from that. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, I have neighbors who will call and say, "I saw you went back to the doctor. Is there anything I can do? Can I bring you something? Can I do something?" And I'm always, no, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm great, just pray for me, just pray for me. Let's sure. talk a little bit about all the prayers that went up for you from ETC. Just your face here, eight minutes a day, sitting right over there on that set, eight minutes a day, you were our go-to guy. And on the way home one day, you got seriously ill. Your life almost ended. You were down to, what did they give you at MD Anderson? One percent chance? Two percent. Two percent chance of survival. Yeah. Two percent. You have proven... And, and the program that we re-aired yesterday was Pam Cavender, Tim Cavender, Jen, and I. Okay, Pam has had double breast cancer. Tim was diagnosed with horrible cancer this year. He is in great condition now. Everything is wonderful, and we just pray and pray and pray, and, but it's, it's the prayers. Jen, actually, I think when all is said and done, the chemo messed with her heart, mm. and Jen is the only one who didn't make it. I'm constantly in this battle because I have these great genetics from my mother and everywhere my mother had cancer I'm getting it and I'm like mama when I get to heaven I have something to yeah, talk exactly. about. Yeah exactly we have issues. Yeah. We got issues but but that's that's out of us out of five of us that's four that are yeah. here today. Still here. Prayers matter. Well and and also I uh, we're going back to that community building you know if you have to get sick, get sick in a small town. Absolutely. Uh, because you do have that foundation. And, and it's not only, um, and of course, the prayers, the love, the support, the people, our neighbors showing up and cutting our grass or bringing mm -hmm. a casserole. Mm -hmm. That's all amazing. But there's almost like an accountability. I knew that 
people were not only rooting for me, they, you know, I don't know, it's not, not, in, a, not in a negative way. Like, I didn't feel pressure, like, I, I have to be there. But I, I knew that I would be missed if I wasn't. And there mm -hmm. was something, uh, you know, when I was at MD Anderson, I received more mail one week. They thought Oprah Winfrey yeah. was there. I mean, <laughs> more than they had ever, any single ever. patient had ever received. I love uh, it. And it was because of you sitting at that I desk, love it. you know, keeping it. the seat warm for me and telling. And I cannot tell you how important that was to it know was that back amazing. home, there were people that were still rooting for me. And I had a cheerleading team that ran up all the way from, from what we call it, from Ball Duck Town, Ball to Ground to Turtle Town. Ball I mean, it was to all the way up yeah. there. And people yeah. that I'd never met yep. that yep. said, you know, you don't know me, but I, every morning I have coffee with you in the morning or in the right. afternoon, I, right. you know, uh, and that meant something. And in, in this show too, I mean, I, I don't know everybody. Hi, everybody. But yeah. um, we started something that is that you're continuing. And how awesome is that? It is, it is amazing. And I remember the first time I did Flavors of the South behind you and your dad, and I was terrified, absolutely terrified, because I'm following two of the greats. Mm -hmm. And I did blackberry cobbler and peach cobbler. And people still call me and say, hey, we remember when you did that. And I said, yeah, and you remember what I look like too, don't you? <laughs> I was a frumpy old lady. And <laughs> now I'm a frumpy old lady again. But, but it was so much fun to do that. And then when Roger Fetch came in and said, can you do live TV? And I said, of course I can do live TV. Nothing we ever do is scripted. Nothing we ever do uses a teleprompter. It is flying by the seat of our pants, talking about yep. life. It's genuine, right? That is you it. Can't, you that can't, is it. Yeah. And I said, I love, I loved Regis and Kelly because I loved Regis. He could do any and everything just like sure. this. He was so cool. But now I love it better that it's Mark and Kelly because they are like that magical combination. So, you know, I haven't, I haven't actually kept up with it. Is oh that, her, is that her husband? Her husband okay. is there now. Forget all those co-hosts that came and went. Her husband is the best co-host she's That's ever great. had. And it is so cool because it's familiar. It's, you know, you don't have to worry about what are we going to talk about today? Sure. Well, my gosh, they know everything about each other and they can talk. Yep. Let's talk a little bit about 515 because when you and I came to Jasper, 515 hadn't existed, no, no didn't such exist. Thing. Yep. And then I remember when it got to 108 and then it got to 53. Well, at first it was Riverstone, like in Canton. Yes, you remember yes, we had to drive old five yes, all the way. Yes. We, we, God, we sound like we need to, you're already in a rocking chair. I feel yeah, like I need to be yeah, in a rocking chair. I have to be in a rocking chair. We need chair. a long tail cat so we yeah, can be talking about yeah. the good old days. But we would drive to Canton on the old five mm -hmm. where the Walmart sits. You would cross and that's where 575 began for the exactly. longest time. Yeah. Uh, and then it extended, of course, to, like as you mentioned, 108. And mm -hmm. we had to get on there, you know, uh -huh. take Refuge Road to 108. Get from Jasper. Refuge, yeah. And then, uh, of course, now you can take it all the way up. You know, it, it changes names uh, from 575 Zell to 515. Miller Parkway, yeah. I think. Landrum, yeah, Landrum, Landrum at one point, and then Zell Miller. I'd like, to, I'd like to know the full um, story behind that, because I think there were some tensions there. Mm -hmm. but, um, I think so. But when, when it was first built, uh, I don't know if you remember, my dad and I used to ride our bicycles everywhere, my mom too. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we would oftentimes, from the Woodbridge, we'd get up early in the morning, we would ride our bicycles up to Old Philadelphia, over to the highway, ride in the middle of the highway all the way to 108, and we might see three cars. That is crazy. Uh, and, you know, it's just rare to see a car. And then we would take 108 all the way to Tate, and we would ride back to the old, where the Dairy Queen used to be. We'd have breakfast with Larry and Rita Johnson. The best biscuits and gravy oh, yeah, in the make, world. Oh, yeah, they make good biscuits. They oh, were my fantastic. gosh, they were so good. Yeah, when they stopped doing breakfast. The day breakfast, they had to tell me they were quitting, I, I was in it. the drive through crying. We were wearing <laughs> black armbands, you know, mourning the loss of Dairy Queen <laughs> biscuits. Crazy. They were really good. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, and then we would come back to Woodbridge all before 9 o'clock. So, we had a long... Yeah. And again, we would see more cars at the Tate Fourway than we would on, on the highway. Exactly. And now I wouldn't even dream about running across the highway on foot or no, much, no, no, you know, no. much less no, a bicycle. No. Well, today I, I wanted to remind all of us about David Ralston and what he meant to this community because usually my, my December shows always included across the room where we would do uh, a sit down with, with Speaker of the House David Ralston and, and I would tease him and I said, look, I drive this road every day. Well, my, my next guest who is Mr. Ella J and y'all know him and love him, he has told me to slow my crazy down <laughs> because he says I'm going to get killed because I drive too fast. Well, I have slowed down to a point that I feel embarrassed that I have a Dale Earnhardt Intimidator <laughs> sticker on the back of my car because I don't drive like I used to. But today, 
And yesterday, yesterday especially, I noticed two vans loaded with kids going to look like a camp or something mm. that had their names, the kids' names on the camp thing. And, and, and they're over here in, in the fast lane. Well, I was in the fast lane, but I could see they were riding my tail. And sure. I thought, come on, I'm already going five miles over the speed limit. Trooper, don't hear that. <laughs> but I'm already going five miles over the speed limit. So I change and get over in the right-hand lane, and they go flying by me. Well, then I look, and they're like a quarter of a mile ahead of me, and I'm thinking, these are two vans loaded with children headed to a camp somewhere up in Fannin County, wherever, and they're going too fast. So I had teased David Ralston about getting a billboard at 108 that says, Welcome to the Mountains, with a picture of a mule's rear end or a donkey's rear end, and it says, Slow your down. Assets. Your, yeah. Slow your assets down. Yeah, because everybody, when they get off, they're going too fast on 575. But when they get to 515, it's like pedal to the metal. Yeah. They've gone crazy. No, it's insane. And uh, today there was a horrible wreck at the hospital. Oh, this morning as I was coming in and traffic was backed up forever. And I was like, this is sad. This is really sad because somebody did something and it was a really bad wreck. And I thought, why are we in such a hurry? Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy every moment of this life. Why are we in such a hurry? It's a cliche, but it's about the journey, right? Not the destination. Mm -hmm. and, and it's been shown even going five miles an hour over the recommended mm -hmm. thing doesn't get you there that no. much faster. Dwight Moments. will tell you, he, he talks about this on the air all the time, and he says, you're going to meet that car that passed yeah. you running 80 at the red sure. light, and you're going to glance sure. over at them, and you can give them whatever signal you want to give them. Yeah. <laughs> or if it's October, you're going to meet them in the in the wall of traffic. Yes, you know. yes, I yes. Think it's kind of crazy you know, to think that... But I wish people would slow down yeah. and enjoy these mountains. Yeah. Or, and we've talked about this before, too, and, and I, I spoke about it years ago, where coming from Jasper to here, I always hopped on 515. Well, one morning, it was a, it was a fall morning, Again, I don't remember when it was, but it was after my first surgeries, and I was already starting to see life through a different lens, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. And I went the old, I went through old um, Highway Five, old Highway Five, the Rebel Inn, and, and then one it's time amazing. I went through um, Whitestone, yes, and went yes. kind of behind the court. Like yeah. I'd, I'd never, yeah. as an adult, you know, yeah. I've been a passenger, but to drive those roads now it took me an extra fifteen minutes. But big deal, it was beautiful. I mean, it's I stopped beautiful. and took pictures of the, you know, it was it was just a great, and I thought, you know, why. You know, it, again, it's the it's such a cliche, but it's about the journey. Yes, you know, the destination. Of course, you're going to get there. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned about recipes. To me, recipes are a lot like driving. There are times that I need to get on the expressway and knock out some food. Exactly. But I enjoy the process of cooking. I like dicing the onions. I like you know peeling the carrots. I put on a podcast or I put on music, um, and I that's my time in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. I enjoy mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. But you have to really make that a paradigm shift. It's a mental exercise to take something that's unpleasant for some mm -hmm. and turn it into something pleasant. But once yeah. you do, it's like one of those illusions that, you know, once you once your mind shifts and you see the you see the profile of two people instead of the, the outline of a vase, or, you know, a simple illusion. And once you've made that switch, it's kind of hard to unsee it. Mm -hmm. So now that I love time in the kitchen, it's hard for me not to enjoy time in the exactly. kitchen. Exactly. Well, let me. We, one thing we haven't discussed: lemon pies. Now, the last time you had a crisis, we sold a lot of oh, lemon pies. Oh, yeah, we pies. did for sure. Maybe over 50, 60, 70. Oh, I, I feel it was closer to 100. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. crazy. Of lemon pies. I just put the word out. Hans is going in the hospital. Yeah, Hans needs to gather some money. And we're going to sell lemon pies. And I still have a picture of Jo coming out here. She's a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. She's over 90 now. Wow. Has survived cancer 25 years. And so today we celebrate each of you who have survived cancer. We celebrate each of you who know that life is about this moment, this instant, enjoy every single moment. And that is something that we have not paid attention to in the past. We're always in a run, we're always, and, and get over it. Just get over it, just sit back and enjoy. I got a really sweet call this morning from some friends down in Cherokee County, and they wanted me to help them decide how to re donate some money that they've raised. And they said, what would you do? And I said, I love helping homeless vets. Mm. I love helping the homeless veterans because the homeless veterans are why I'm free in America, why I can come on TV and talk about being a Christian, talk about life in the fast lane, talk about the old timey ways because some, some veteran somewhere yep. lay down his life for me. Sure. And so I, I help veterans and, and I have to say thank you to each and every one of you who donated coats 
my car's full again today and I'm going down to deliver them. That's two loads in my Suburban that we will be personally delivering and then we hope that with all the boxes that we put out there will be more and more and more. But we are here to enjoy our life but also to give back and that's something when you survived you have given and given oh, and given and given. Most of my quote unquote free time now is spent at the service of others and I just got back from uh, Princeton, New Jersey, did a a healthy cooking demonstration up there this past since since I was on the show uh, I went around the world in June mm -hmm. I went to uh, did a, a thing at a, a gastric cancer convention um, on nutrition in Yokohama Japan and then from there I did one in Leipzig Germany and from there I did one in Barcelona Spain and it's all because and I'm not saying that to you know to, oh look I, I did it because someone asked me could you come and speak to this group mm -hmm. of people who need mm -hmm. to hear that mm -hmm. uh, and so for me the answer is always because yes. two percent survival rate you're here yeah and I've got you know I you don't want anybody to give up and and honestly statistically my on paper my life will not be a long one but I don't live in fear of that right I mean I, I'm I'm uh, you know I'm trying to outrun myself but while I'm here and while knock on wood, I'm, I'm feeling good uh, and feeling better. I got a little procedure tomorrow I've got to deal with, but I'll always have health issues. But when I am able to pay it forward, as we talked about earlier, I'm going to pay it forward because I had a, a gentleman, Jim Zember in Jasper, who was my lighthouse. He was an example for me of someone who had my exact disease, same or similar surgeries, who was about four years ahead of me. And, you know, he didn't tell me the nitty gritty to scare me. He did so to say, look, it kind of sucks, but I'm still here, mm -hmm. and here are the pitfalls. Is and he still here today? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is awesome. He's in his 80s, So we're going to celebrate him. Uh, he is yeah. amazing. In fact, I ran into his wife, who also survived cancer, and they became my support network. And he actually, when I at one point was sort of gushing, saying, how can I ever repay you? And he said, pay it forward. Mm -hmm. So the next mm -hmm. person you know that, that is looking for that lighthouse, be that lighthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, and for me, going to Japan was actually a, kind of a long time bucket list for me because one of the first patients that I um, was mentoring was a Japanese American lady whose parents immigrated here from Japan mm -hmm. who had stomach cancer and sadly she passed away. Uh, and she actually asked me, uh, she said, if you can, please go to Japan because there the culture is once you're diagnosed with cancer, it's kind of a, uh, you're sort of shunned. I mean, not necessarily intentionally, you just don't integrate back into society. You kind of live at like a shut-in. Wow. Uh, now again, this was going back 15 years ago in the, the, the um, what's the word, the opinion, the, the culture is changing where they are also proud of their survivors. But for a time, it was more kind of a, you know, great, you survive, but there wasn't that uh, patient advocacy, patient support. Mm -hmm. So th me being asked to go and speak in Japan was, almost like in honor of that lady who, again, she sadly passed, but mm -hmm. um, to be able to stand on stage in front of you know a, a room full of people that needed to see that lighthouse, it's, it's my absolute honor to do that. Well, today when you leave here, and he's gonna leave here in a few minutes, and then we're gonna do a commercial break, and then we're gonna bring Mr. Ella J on, so. Oh, here's where the knives come today, out. Today, <laughs> today, I brought Hans a present and a present and then I brought two for him to get sharpened for me, but these are old knives. And this one just reminds me of your dad oh, for yeah. some weird reason. Oh no, me too actually. <laughs> and he yeah. had some of the yeah. he had some of the knives. His his father was a, a veterinarian by trade, but also after the war, um, he was inspecting slaughterhouses. Mm -hmm. And so we had a lot of large uh, intentional knives like this uh, mm -hmm. from that were from my opa. Uh, that my dad had and we still have and Tony Whitfield um, who goes by why not sharp the letter mm -hmm. Y why not mm -hmm. sharp he does the Jasper Farmers Market from time to time he has been twice voted best in Georgia as wow. nice sharpening Wow! Uh, and he's phenomenal he's not him and his wife are both incredibly pleasant people but he can put an edge on a knife uh, better than anybody and I'm me being in this industry mm -hmm. he's who I bring my knives to and if somebody takes your expensive knife and uses it as a can opener and breaks the tip, oh, wow. he can actually put a new tip on there. Now, the knife might be a little, a little bit, bit shorter, shorter. Yeah. but other yeah. than that, yeah. people wouldn't even know. He does an amazing yeah. job. Yeah. So he's going to be at the Woodbridge General Store today until 4 o'clock, mm -hmm. and he does... Beginning at what time? 12? Well, uh, basically now-ish, 11-ish. Uh, yeah. So um, he is going to be doing knives, and if 
Uh, he'll be doing them on site real time, but if you don't have time to hang around, you can leave them, he'll sharpen them, and you can pick them up later. Mm -hmm. He also does, um, for people that are uh, in cosmetology, he does uh, professional scissors, he mm -hmm. resharpens them. Mm -hmm. He does pizza cutter, basically if it has an edge, he can do it. He also does uh, power tool blades, but not at this event. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can drop them off, he'll take them back and sharpen, because he said that it's a little messier to do those. Mm -hmm. um, but even this old blade, which actually this still has a surprising edge on it, mm -hmm. uh, but he can make this thing sing like new. So if you're in Jasper and you need your knife sharpened, and there's no more dangerous kitchen tool than a dull knife, because right. what ends up happening is you put more pressure than you need to, and mm -hmm. then if you slip, you're you got all that weight behind yep. you. So yep. sharp knife is the way to go. Yep. Okay, and this one I'm giving you those nice. as, as gifts for you, and you're not supposed to give a knife because it brings bad news. So I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna sell them to you for a penny. There a we piece. go. There we go. A penny a piece, and then these two are two. I peel a lot of potatoes. Oh, that's perfect. And so I like these little paring knives, yeah. and so these I just wanted to see if you could get him to sharpen these for me. I haven't even tested these. But these are old, too. I just love old knives. Oh, I think and they're so, great. And, yeah. you know, the health inspector doesn't like wooden handles in a professional kitchen. Right. But in a home kitchen, to right. me, those it, are home that's kitchens. what yeah. it feels great in mm -hmm. my hand. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, again, with peeling potatoes, and you probably mm -hmm. do, or apples even, I just go all the way around it. I think um, this is the perfect tool for that. So, yeah, yeah, we'll, get, yeah. Uh, we'll get some new, uh, new awesome. edges on these guys. Awesome. And, and awesome. I can bring them to ball around for you. Or, you can swing by now, Jasper. what can folks do for you besides pray for you? Well, th that's the most important thing. I mean, I, again, the support's awesome. I've had this pump in my belly for the last seven years, which has been kind of mitigating some of the nerve damage because with this nerve damage, with, with no stomach, if I take a pill orally, it either has no effect because a lot of medications are designed to dissolve in stomach acid, which mm -hmm. I don't have, mm -hmm. or it hits me too much too fast too soon mm -hmm. so this has been a game changer for me and it's allowed me to be able to do all the things that i do because it gives an incredibly tiny micro dose directly into my spine but these things are only designed to, to last about eight years and so we're coming to the end of the usefulness of this pump mm -hmm. um, so we've known for a year that this is going to be happening so we've been tapering this down um, and so because it goes into my spine there's always a risk of paralysis there's always a risk of um, migraines because you're messing with spinal fluid and all mm -hmm. that stuff. So I'm not worried about the actual physical, this will be my 19th surgery, I think. Um, my, my, I'm old, my surgery's old enough to vote, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, um, so yeah, just keep me in your thoughts and prayers. I, I appreciate that, of course. And then this new venture at, at Woodbridge, at the Woodbridge General Store, like I said, it's right downtown. I would love just the I'd love for it to become your destination in Jasper Absolutely. for gift giving. If you need a culinary mm -hmm. gift, mm -hmm. if you need a food gift, we've got all kind of uh, custom jams, jellies and uh, spices and mustards and sauces and things, but we're going to be doing lots of classes. I've got mm -hmm. a friend named Megan McCarthy who does uh, Healthy Cooking 101, incredibly charming lady. She's doing a class on December 13th. Uh, I've got a friend named Brenda Hill uh, who does homemade jams, jellies, preserves. She's mm -hmm. coming January 20th to teach people how to make old-fashioned mm -hmm. putting up green mm -hmm. beans and whatnot, mm -hmm. which is a skill that sadly is being right. you know, I, lost. I still do that. And I, I probably, me and my cousins, who were all like second or third cousins, we're the generation after our grandmothers and great-grandmothers who taught us to yeah. can. We all still can. But we're a dying breed. Well, that's, I mean, we're again, a dying breed. I asked Brenda yeah. to come up because not only is she amazing at it, she's she inspires you to do it, which mm -hmm. is just mm -hmm. as important. Mm -hmm. uh, and I want to get you in there to do classes. You tried to teach me how to make business, biscuits <laughs> once, and I think that was the last time I even tried. <laughs> but I would take a biscuit class from you and or a cobbler. Okay class, but that's what I'm hoping it I will kind of... I want to teach everybody to make my peach cobbler because if you do it the way I do it, it is so simple. Oh, yeah. It is so amazingly and it's good. it's 100% consistent every time. And, yeah. and people are like, well, I tried it and it's not like yours. Well, they didn't pay attention. Yeah. And all you have to do is pay attention. It is so simple. It's crazy simple. But I, And I have to say thank you to the progress. They, they love you. And, and we've, you know, the progress has been around for over 100 years, longer than you and I have been around. And I like putting the recipes in the paper, but I don't like that we don't get that physical showing them stuff. Sure. Because then people will call me and say, I tried your recipe, I hope I got it right. And it's hard to explain in writing exactly what the technique is. I, and I think, you know, that's hard. I, and you've heard me say it a hundred times. If, I, if the recipe calls for half an onion, 
if it's Vidalia onion season, you could put five onions in there. Mm -hmm. If it's February, half an onion might be too much. Yes. And so yes. the recipe should be sort of a suggestion, mm -hmm. you know, unless it's baking, which of course... The recipe you, is you know, only a beginning. It's a beginning, <laughs> right? And then, uh, you know, when you are in that physical space and you're in the kitchen with somebody and you can see they just threw that together. Mm -hmm. And so I always tell people... And it worked. It worked. <laughs> And they can see you making it real time. And I tell people that when you go to see the Rolling Stones, they don't hand you sheet music at the beginning of the concert. Mm -hmm. You're there and you're in the moment, right? And Or when you used to do live music right here, they don't hand you sheet music. You're mm -hmm. just enjoying that experience. And yep. to be in this room, it's great to watch it on television, but to be here yeah. is a different thing. Yeah. So at those cooking classes, don't go like it's a, like it's a lecture where you have to, you know, go and pay attention why is she doing that mm -hmm. what's hear mm -hmm. the stories about who taught you and what the situation mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. or the one time you didn't have x ingredient and you had to you had to figure it out well right? you know and and everybody who ever goes to my youtube channel knows i made biscuits one day and i had five pounds of white lily self rising sitting there five pounds of white lily plain sitting mm. there and guess which one sherry picked up the wrong one the biscuits were flat as a flitter they still tasted amazing sure. But they were flat as a flitter, and I'm like, oh, no, I I've never done that before. My first solo show with Rhonda on uh, Flavors of the South, I had asked for all-purpose flour. Well, she got self-rising, mm -hmm. so I'm making German noodles. And they go, and boom! And they're, they're, you know, as I put them in the water, and luckily I had some that I'd already made ahead of time yeah. that I was able to kind of swap out. But yeah. I was on television panicking, like, oh, my God, these look like dead goldfish, you know, like long dead goldfish. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, yeah, I, I got to get to Jasper. You do. I, thank you for I being love, here today. I always love visiting with you. I love actually thank the you, fireplace is yeah. a nice uh, yeah, is a nice yeah. touch. Yeah. Um, but I I love all of you. And again, thank you for decades now of support. This ETC, this uh, our home away from home is such a rare thing. Mm -hmm. And I and I the people that are watching this, I know I'm preaching to the choir because if you don't have ETC3, you're not watching this. Right. But it is so cool that we have this platform, we have this time together, um, that we can have conversations about things that are not just local, they're hyper local. I mean, mm -hmm. they're, mm -hmm. you know, you can't, if you know where Tate is or mm -hmm. Rabbit Town or mm -hmm. Turtle Town mm -hmm. or Duck Town mm -hmm. or any other animal themed town, right. I mean, they're the size <laughs> of this rug. I mean, some of yeah. these communities, but yeah. my neighbor in Tate, so I'm not from Tate, I'm from Rabbit Town. Rabbit Town was <laughs> two blocks over. away, one, you know, <laughs> yeah. But but that's that's the kind of conversation yeah, you can yeah, have on yeah. this platform that you couldn't have on an Atlanta station. Yeah. And and it means something to somebody. And we are so thankful and, for and it. And when so. you and I go through ball ground or Tate or whatever, people actually stop and talk oh, to yeah. us. Now yeah. I might not know them the way that they think that they know me, you right, know, but right. I, it doesn't matter. I'm still going. And 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 we run into that every day, sure. and you're like, oh my gosh, they have the advantage because they see right. us daily. Yeah. So it's hard, and you're like. I wish I could remember their names. So well, but, but know yeah. that when I can't remember your name, it's not because of lack of respect. It's not because of lack of trying. Uh, it, we, <coughs> and I, I'm speaking for you, but we take it as such a such an honor and mm -hmm. such a rare thing that we get to be even vicariously a part of your life, and we hold that. Uh, you know, I, I don't ever want to try to be a snake oil salesman or you take advantage of the fact that mm -hmm. we have this audience. So I try to curate the things that we are sharing with you, mm -hmm. whether it's our favorite guitarist or whether it's our favorite right. knife sharpener. Right. Right. We're not getting a kickback. We're doing it because it's something we believe in and exactly. are passionate about, and hopefully that comes across. I, I don't ever want anybody to think, well, he's just trying to sell me something. I'm not, you know, yeah. um, but I will. Um, I, invite I, you to the Woodbridge in oh, General yeah, Store. for sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah. I'll make you some Bananas Foster when you're ready for yeah, it too. Let me yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for being here. We are gonna take a commercial break, and when you come back, Mr. LJ will be here, and he's probably going to get on to me because he heard me say I go five miles an hour <laughs> over the speed limit. Lord, I'm in for it. I'll see you all in a minute. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside-down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meet, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? The mountains are calling and they're closer than you think. 
Farmers Crossing and Ball Ground offers creekside lots with homes beginning in the 400s. Walking distance to downtown shopping, dining, tennis courts, Calvin Farmer Park, and local events. It also includes a beautiful hike to Long Swamp Creek. Leave the car and the worries behind. Move in by fall 2023. Call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. You know, how you feel on the inside yeah. is just as important to me as how you feel on the outside. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> my grown-up, grown-up, every is way and every way, care and take care of you. You're my grown-up, and I know you're there. I'm your grown-up, and you know I care. Yes, it's you and me, and me, and, me and, you. and you. So when you are okay, or not okay, I'll take care of you. Don't you think it's time to go Where black bears climb and waters flow Hummingbirds out on the deck Your feet propped up and what the heck Whether you're swimming in the sea Or splashing in the pool making a masterpiece yeah. yes or just yeah. making memories yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 writing a great american novel <clears throat> or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow whatever you do in life farmers is here to protect it for all your insurance needs call donald curtis in blue ridge Yay, we're back. You know, it's the Christmas season, and you like some things about Christmas. You like Christmas food. You like Christmas music, because you did a really, really good Christmas CD. Yeah. And you did a special song that you wrote. Can we talk a little bit about the man and the bridge and the Christmas song? Yeah. What possessed you to write that song? A bunch of it's real, isn't it? Yeah, a lot of it is. Uh, I, it was a real story. I was, uh, which camera am I on? Your camera, I think, is right there in front of you. Yeah, there it is. Yes. Yeah, over there, yeah. <laughs> Got it. I was working, and uh, it's a true story, yeah. really. Yeah. You know. Well, I hope that we can play that today. Um, I, I love that song. I love that story because, you know, I've had these homeless veterans in my mind. Your song talks about a man under the bridge, yeah. obviously a homeless person. He lay back there on his sack as I played the one about the Cadillac. Right, right. And um, as a 
person who was working Christmas Day, a lot of folks are going to be working Christmas Day. A lot of folks aren't going to spend time with their family. They're going to have a job. They may be a police officer, an EMT. They may uh, work in a restaurant that's open on Christmas Day. Yeah. There are a lot of people Somebody's who Somebody's going to work. Yeah, yeah, who won't be with their family. Yeah. Actually, that was Christmas Eve when I was working. And it really started snowing, and Slim said, park the cruiser and patrol in that old scout of yours. Because uh -huh, uh -huh. the scout would go anyway, uh -huh, you know. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. yeah, so I hope that Trace can pull that up with the Christmas music. And can we play that one, or does it have to be remastered? No, no. Can no, we do it? Yeah, we can do it. Remastered. Okay, so if, if we can get that Christmas song, and um, I, w I would love to share that at the end of today because that song, the first time I heard it, you, you played it for me in July. Do you remember that? I recorded it in July, and it was really weird. <laughs> yeah, it was really weird. <laughs> well, you, you said, hey, you haven't heard this one, and I was standing in 57 Heaven, and tears started coming down my cheeks, and you said, yeah, it did that to me too when I was mm -hmm. writing it. Actually, you can hear, I can, I can hear in the recording, uh -huh. I can hear the, I was a little soupy, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. and that's what does it. Yeah, that's what does it. I've asked you lately to write a lot of original stuff because, number one, you have a lot of memories, you have a lot of, of a lot of good things that have happened to you, some not so good things. You lost your mom suddenly and you've written about that, Jesus called, and you've now written about your dad, Daddy's Lunchbox. Oh, well, you hear that one. It's in mastering right now. It is. And yeah. when is it going to be back? Uh, I'm not sure, but those three that you want are going to be here probably this week. That would be that's, awesome. Uh, yeah. That's being done as we speak. Well, <laughs> last night I sent you a message. Do you remember the message I said about days gone by? About to think about that because you've taken me to so many places for video shoots that your grandma and grandpa lived there, or your mom and daddy lived there, mm -hmm. or you have childhood memories there. There's a song in all those childhood memories. I don't know how you're gonna put it together, but I think it needs to be a joyful song of a child going back, of an adult going back to his childhood. Yeah. Because not everybody had a happy childhood, but you had a pretty awesome childhood. Boy, I did. From Latham Town to down to Ella J, you know, yeah. the, the whole thing, when you look at your life, you really did have, you had a good life. Yeah. Not that it's ended. Hog killings and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you could write about those days gone by from the perspective of going back as an adult male and visiting, you didn't realize sitting on Granny's porch was really as cool as it was. I know. But it was really cool. My job was to get the, st the wood chopped and ready to go under the wash pot for the hog killing. Had to have a lot of hot water, you know. I love Scalding it. water, they <laughs> call it. See, you could write yeah. about that. I there's, know. there's so much left in your brain. You've written maybe, mm. are you going to release five originals this time? I have completely lost track. There's a bunch of them. There's a lot of them. And uh, I'm, I've got it all worked up, and it's, it's together on a, on a flash drive. So no matter what happens, you're going to have your songs. Yeah. I kept <laughs> telling him, Dwight, if you die, I don't know how to finish these projects. And so he said, well, they're right here. Well, then I'll have to get them to master and it crazy yeah. days, he won't. I? <laughs> yeah. so it'll all have to be done. But, but you really have given so much to this community and every day my phone rings and y'all are wanting to know where's them new CDs? Well, they're not quite done yet. I promised you by Christmas and I lied to you because he had a little trouble getting the harmonica guy in, but you got it done. Yeah, that harmonica guy. Good. Boy, he came though, what, a week, a week ago? Two, yes, two finally, weeks ago? Finally, I was Nailed ready. Nailed it to the wall. Yeah, yeah. And I've already got that mixed in too, and it's it's ready. You see, uh, I sent those three that you said you needed. Because I pitched fit. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I did. And uh, <laughs> to get them mastered, they're just being mastered yeah. for whatever you're going to use them for around here. But the others, they'll go actually on a on an album together, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm going. They'll be done t soon too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're sitting over here by the fireplace today because we just decided an easy life. The winter's upon us, the cold weather. You like cold weather because you said you get more done on the inside. I really do. Yeah. 
because if it's hot, you're out doing something crazy. Or involving bush sitting hogging. under the air conditioner trying to not yeah. die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we hope that as the winter months come and you got a fireplace going and you've got friends coming in that you will not get sad and depressed. A lot of people do. No, you can't and let we that don't happen. want that. We no. don't want that. We want y'all to stay But now sometimes up. you write good songs when that happens. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. And he has written a really good song, and we're going to go to that song now. Y'all yep. got to hear it this week. It's called Mountain Life. And it truly, <clears throat> the true story is, we were literally riding the road, going to Morganton, moving stuff to the thrift stores for an estate sale. We'd been hauling junk and hauling junk and hauling junk. Yeah. And his phone rings, and somebody says, can you write me this song? And he hung up, and he said, well, they think I can just write a song. And I said, well, you can. It usually don't happen like that. And you did. Can I take us into the song? Yes. Okay, yes. right now? Yes. Now? Yes. Here we go, Mountain Life.
It's all right The mountain life Yay! <laughs> that was really me. I don't know about y'all, but I love that song. That is the most calming. It's one of those you just want to live that life. You want to sit on the porch. What the heck? You just want to do it. And I had so, a last minute thought. I, uh, it was uh, take a trip to Ella J. See the bright red Georgia clay. I like that. I love it. I yeah. love it. And it's, it is truly one of those things that just popped up. He said, I can't do it. And in about 20 minutes, he dooed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so it was, it was it. done and done. <laughs> it was done. Well, we're going to okay, leave. Okay, it wasn't quite just 20 minutes. No, no, it wasn't. It was shortly. Yeah. It, was, it, it wasn't a long time, though. But we're going to leave y'all with a song that really means a lot to me. And it, it's called Merry Christmas, Ella J. And it, it speaks of a lot of people, um, whether it be the EMTs, the firefighters, the police officers. It, you know, it, it speaks to working the holidays, maybe because you've lost your family, maybe because your family's out of town. Just it's different as reasons. real as it gets. I yeah. mean, this song yeah. is so real. Yeah. You know, I mean, and if it doesn't bring a tear to your eye, then just go ahead and slap yourself because you must be about <laughs> dead. It brought a tear to my eye. It, it always. It, it's really touching. So today, as we leave you, this is original music by Dwight Sanford. This is original music that, that was born right here in L.J., Georgia. And I hope in the, in the near future you get to hear a whole lot of what he has written about this town that he truly loves. And uh, that's the whole point of this. Settle in somewhere, get comfortable, and do something productive for those that you love. And you're producing music to share with everybody, and it's it's amazing. So thank you very much for doing that. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Now, you're you want to throw pleasure. it to this song? Huh? You want to tell them, go to my song? Yeah, we're ready for Merry Christmas, Ella J. Coming at you right now. It was Christmas time in my hometown in 1989. Kinfolk would be coming down, but none of whom were mine. So I told the captain, I'll just work a double, I believe, so the ones that have their families can be home on Christmas Eve. I'm a police man in Georgia, and a young one, by the way. Silver bells, shotgun shells, and a four-door Chevrolet. The weatherman says snow tonight, and no one should be out. Slim left word to park the cruiser and patrol in my old scout. Barely just into the night, as the snow came falling down, dispatch come on with a call to the bridge just north of town. The call came from a payphone. They said they saw a light. As I approached, an old guitar was ringing through the night. There beneath the steel and stone on a worn out sleeping bag, an old man sat there all alone, humming one by hag. The fire lit up his tired old face, his eyes shined in the light. He said, Lieutenant, I guess I'm out of place, but I'll just be here for tonight. Dispatch come back on the air. Is everything 10 4? I told him I'd be there a couple minutes more. I said that old Gibson sounded fine. He said it's all that's left that I call mine. It's been with me since 1954. I had a loving family, but the Lord, He needed them more than me. New Year's Eve, 1967. It seems like only yesterday. But it was long ago and far away I'm on the road and they're all up in heaven He said anyway, I can't play like before My fingers don't work good anymore If you'll let me stay here just tonight I'll be gone by morning light I stood a block of wood up on its end And he handed me his only friend I sat down there by the fire and I played that old man's heart's desire As he lay back there on his sack I played the one about the Cadillac And I watched him as he drifted off to sleep I put his old guitar to bed 
jumped his fire and in my head a scene played out that I will always keep. Be careful how you treat them all. You never know when you might fall and need someone to show a little love. Or even in just what disguise something opens up your eyes. Or when you'll have a visit from somewhere up above. Two C's, ten eight. Merry Christmas, LJ.